Hi, good morning. Deconstruction, deconstructionism. There was a movement in the 80s, some philosophers introduced a new concept in this world about regarding the systems in the world. They say the systems are so rigid. In other words, everything is institutionalized. The systems are on the verge of a collapse. Do not add more institutions. More institutions, more institutions, more regulations, more, 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 more. The system is so, so rigid. They say the system needs to deconstruct, dismantle instead of adding more institutions. This is in the 80s. <clears throat> to dismantle and to deconstruct. That's why they call it deconstructionism and the movement uh, deconstructionism where vist, deconstruction vists, etc. So, even though there is a different uh, also direction to this movement, they speak about architecture, the way the language is, and says they say everything is rational instead of like the subjective view, point of view, is no longer existing. This is what they say. What they think is, that's in the 80s, you can imagine of today, you know what I'm saying? In the 80s, like you have 40 years today, how the systems are. The thing is, they were right. But what is, why? Because is there a room for a person to exercise his thoughts? Is there a room left for a person to exercise his emotions? It's nothing. Is everything is taken, sent to the institution, institutionalization of the emotions. And then, as you say, the system is so rigid, so like to such a point like today, you can imagine what you see, all these consequences. Violence in the world. And when they speak about the causes, they scratch the surface. Anyway, the point of view is what is my role, me as an individual? You talk about this, you can understand the system, you can understand this, but what is my role? What kind of you know, benefits I'm going to get? Is there an escape for an individual person? <laughs> my uniqueness. I'm influenced by the system, and I like it or not. When we think about the world, when we think about the alternative, the alternative, it is always, in the point of view, in the majority, is known, and it is collective. When you think about an alternative, it has to be a system. When you think about an alternative, it has to be a regime. You know, when you think about an alternative, you have to think about an organization to sensitize. Okay, to sensitize, to bring people's awareness, to let them know that everything is... When in fact, the true meaning of the word alternative, we never heard about it. It's an individual, it's not collective. It's my role. Since because I have been living all my life under an institution, under the institutionalization of the emotions, when I think I cannot think I have to have another kind of platform prepared for me to think, to stand on that platform and to be in that labyrinth or maze. I can't, I don't know. It's a little vague, I know. A lot vague, maybe. You live in a democracy that is controlled by a monocracy. Even if it is a theocracy, by the way. You know, it seems if there is a theocracy, you know, the words, it's a system in the God's command. It's like making it everything a religious state. 
Don't be surprised. It could be a religious state yet. It's another type of monocracy controlling supposedly a democracy. Because a democracy, the true meaning of a democracy, it's an individual const it's you. What is your role? As we're gonna see see it. What is your role? I'm gonna give you a small example. I'm sorry I give always it's annoying about this example, but it's kind of <laughs> you know, it gives an idea. An action. An action is mine when it is not mine. You know, an action is mine. Imagine consider like look at me i am uh, exercising you know exercising i have a free weight yesterday i gave an example you know this is another video but uh, i'm sorry it's annoying but it's just it's very kind of like giving a good uh, results you can understand something from this <clears throat> the action is mine when i do it when i exercise it you know and the standpoint is mine, and the center of gravity is mine. Consider this movement, I hold it, but there is a mechanical action when and where I don't contract the muscle. Am I going to develop the muscle? No. The effort comes from outside. The center of gravity is referring to the time and space my space, my standpoint on which I stand, the trampoline or a platform on which I stand when I accomplished that action. Center of gravity is my time. When it comes to the intention, most of the time, most of the time an intention is not mine. I'm driven by the flow of the habits. I'm driven by the flow of traditions, of the ambience to seize my time from the collective time, my individual time from the collective time. It's hard. To have a, we have to have a real presence of mind. To seize your time to escape being an individual in a collective arena or social arena, that's, that's something you have to be really smart as I said the intention is not mine the willpower is not mine where is the me it's my democracy at the moment I do whatever I want yes I want to go and eat I want to do but it is I'm a pre-programmed by a flow of the habit an example, a very small example, and I am no mean to refer to this example. Someone is going to tell me, what do you want to think, like an anarchist or what? You want to get... Um, I am giving just an example. These kind of holidays that you see in our world, the day of this, the day of this, Mother's Day, Mother, you know, Father's Day, whatever, or the day of the love. What's wrong with it? It's an ambience. <clears throat> There is nothing wrong, all I'm saying, do not restrict the empathy, the sympathy in one day. You have 365 days a year. I'm saying this. If you feel that impetuous dynamism stimulated by from outside, big chances, as I said, the intention is not yours. And the willpower is not yours. That's a monocracy controlling a democracy. You do whatever you want. You wait for that day. You are that day. Big chances, the 364 days, perhaps they won't exist, will not exist in the calendar of your psyche. Yet, you are here to take advantage of 365 days a year and a week, eight days a week. It's not seven days a week. <laughs> like I said, you know, eight days a week, I love you. See, that's, that's a beautiful one. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, as I said, an example. We're going to, uh, as I said, going to, in history, speak to Moses' time. Peace be upon him.
that's for the Jewish. If there is someone, my cousin can share with us this. And don't take it as like a, a historical event or a myth, as they say. It's a myth. You know, when the, uh, the modern man doesn't like to think, use the word myth. Because instead of like uh, to have the urge to navigate between beyond time and space, no. He likes to be driven by the institution. Though his thoughts are always characterized by because, therefore, such which implies. So he doesn't want to navigate. So it's preferable, as I said, think about this event because it has a reenactment all the time. You are living this voluntarily and voluntarily. You are living them. Those events, the same thing, is just a different name of personalities. The system was like this during Pharaoh's time in Egypt. Moses, when there was a dialogue between him and Pharaoh, they wanted to show him that he was wrong. He, he wanted to show them God's image. He did not come with the idea to defy anybody. He's talking to them about God. He didn't come to give them an alternative of a regime. He didn't come to make a coup d'etat. He didn't name anything. He said, go to the creator or what he was doing. These people created by themselves and collapse, they cause the collapse or the perdition by themselves. They say, why don't you show us, in other words, to do or to have a contest. He said, yes, why not? Moses was doing everything meticulously. He suggested the day of the festival, the day that the population glorify Pharaoh's patriotism. But he knew the regime survived with the magicians. That was the big force of the corporate media. Everything is camouflaged. Is the cover-up campaign all the time. Not protecting the regime, is directing people to the wrong, directing people, everything with simulation, not reality. People were living without realizing what they were doing. The population was brainwashed. I'm talking to Daya, I'm going to Pharaoh. <laughs> so, she suggested the day of the festival at the time, and then. The magicians, they came. They came with the idea to defy, to show you who we are. Moses came with the idea how much I am not. Look at the difference. You know, the how much I am not, it will suck the force. They came with the idea how much we are. You know, he came how much I am not and how much God is. This is what his idea. But anyway, when he looked the magicians, the way they were living their life, they believe in their lives. The secret agent, when he is trained, the spy, trained to believe in his lies, even if you catch him, he has ever been caught by uh, an enemy, and you put him under a polygraph, a lie detector, he won't get the truth because he was trained how to beat the lie detector, and he can win. He can uh, leap over the polygraph. All the nation was living like that. They saw it as a democracy and they did not realize they were conducted or they were driven, controlled by a monocracy. The day what he verbalized to them, he stood there and he articulated. They said, who to you? Why his words affected them, we're going to see. Say, who to you? Do not lie about God, or he will destroy you. People, simulators, liars will fail. He articulated this to them. The bypass that was existing inside their subconscious that made them believe in their lies was touched. Why he affected them, you, me, I go and talk to people about this. It doesn't affect them because I'm a liar like them. I'm, I'm, one day I say the truth, another day I do it, and I joke and I tell you, you don't know the reality from the truth from me. 
the person who never lied in his life before the message the divine receiving the divine message and after he will affect people when he said this to them they felt that but anyway they said quickly they tried to intimidate him they say will you throw or shall we throw first in other words they are ropes and sticks he said go ahead they threw their sticks their ropes became all reptiles on the ground you know moses what he did he back up everybody thought probably he was scared no he gave them that kind of self-confidence standing on lies reinforcing their platform fake false platform in their own subconscious and the whole population was they were spectator or they were spectators over there watching he back up you know a prophet doesn't do things on i'm going to show you who i am he waited it was, was a matter of a fraction of a second god told him through moses he threw his cane it swallowed everything when you think about what that did it swallow it didn't swallow the sticks and the ropes it it uh, swallowed the fakery sticks and the ropes they remain on the ground this is what struck the magicians you know the fakery the second personality the illusions that were in their mind related linked to the fakery was destroyed was swallowed by the truth which was the cane of moses peace be upon him look what how the prophets are they prostrated quickly the platform is not there you should read this how god described he didn't describe they prostrated voluntarily there is a verb in arabic arabic is very rich literature he said Wa sahara said you don't they fell down with prostration it's like they don't have much of a choice he didn't say to prostrate and to fall down with prostration meaning you like it or you don't like it you're gonna go down so they fell down they prostrated to god the thing my topic is not to give a story 1001 night pharaoh what did he say he said you believe in him before i give you instruction before i authorize you do you understand pharaoh is scared if the time and space and the manner are not in his hand so this is my really the thing i want to talk about when you choose to do something good or you do it you do it on your own at your moment something good i'm not talking something you destroy or you do anything bad no time space you know he said well if you give instruction to people instruction to someone to pray that's not his prayer even though he is praying to god but it's not his prayer it's your prayer it's the governor prayer so everything is controlled till he guided from external being from our cousins jewish to our cousins christians mr lucifer met jesus christ peace be upon him he told him he mr lucifer by the way some people don't know him. that's the devil that's satan in the corporate life today his name is mr lucifer he's a ceo chief executive officer you know what i'm saying yeah in a stock market of jeopardy so he he this one says to jesus say there is no god except god jesus was in a catch-22 in other words if he answered it's an obeyed obey obedient to satan if he refused he will deny the oneness of god that's a catch-22 but look at the the way he is the way he reacted he kept quiet for a few seconds he said i say it because god told me to say it instructed me not because of you enemy of god i don't know if you understand my point 
He said something, but even though it was, it would be in obedience to Satan, he has told you to do something. Be careful of the goodness instructed by Satan. Don't play in the field of Satan. Stay, stick to <coughs> your conscience with the Creator. I give these two examples. Now, a deconstruction, this is the deconstruction. A deconstruction is when you seize your, or dismantling, you seize is not by looking at another system, is how to seize your uniqueness in the time and space in a manner. Because these three metaphors are not yours, are not mine. Now, look at the system how it is today. You see the, the violence, you know, domestic violence. The system is itself violent. You don't see it violent, is itself promoting indirectly criminology. You look at the person, what they are doing, young kids going to school shooting. People shooting, killing, not the, only the US. Huh? everywhere in the world. The only thing in the US is because it's like the targeted country, but it's happening in everywhere. Probably not that uh, exactly the same numbers, but like it is existing. The kid, the human being is living in rigid systems in the world up to the point there is no room left for him to express, to exercise his emotions. Listen, thank you for uh, Prisons, and I see you soon.